Hi, Kristen. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. It's a total pleasure to Zoom you. <laughs> uh, and um, let's just jump right into Mrs. Danvers and other adaptations of Rebecca. The, the nature of Mrs. Danvers' relationship with Rebecca has long been discussed for its lesbian subtext. Um, and there's already speculation about this one from gay Twitter, who believes Mrs. Danvers, you are Mrs. Danvers, is a gloriously intimidating lesbian. Do you think there is some queer history between the two? Um, well, I didn't really want to kind of uh, underline any. I just felt that I don't know. You know, I, d I don't know what, uh, what there is. I think what has happened, my, my version of the story, if you're interested, is that she, um, Mrs. Danvers, was abandoned by the man you know, the man with the capital T. And he, there was a Mr. Danvers, he was probably killed in the First World War, which happened a lot. There were a lot of single women of that age at that time. Um, and she'd lost everything. She'd lost status, she'd lost her money, she'd lost her love, she'd lost everything. And then she becomes an employee in someone's house and she's employed as a governess and she looks after this little girl and she pours all her love into this little girl. And this, this little girl becomes a teenager and then becomes a young woman who behaves incredibly badly, who seduces all these men. And Mrs. Danvers is living vicariously through this. And I think at some point, her own sexual frustration or her own desire must have got caught up in all of this. And, you know, does she have, is she a lesbian? I don't know, we didn't really explore that properly, but um, we don't have time. Unfortunately, it's a film called Rebecca and not a film called Mrs. Danvers. However, if there's a film made by, <laughs> called Mrs. Danvers, we may have another look at that. I am all for it. And as long as the queer community can go on believing that. Exactly, why not? I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, while we're on the topic of, of queer, Things. I must acknowledge your very viral moment from last year when you played a magnificent power lesbian on Fleabag and your epic feminist menopause speech in that bar. Oh, I what loved did... that. We oh, all that loved was it. Such fun. Such fun to say. Oh, I've been longing to say that for years. <laughs> <laughs> what did that role do for your already immense lesbian following? Gosh, do you know, I, I hadn't even begun to think about that. And then suddenly I realized what was going on. I thought, oh, great. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, it's, it's fantastic. I'm really, I'm really happy about it. And, and to, to think that something has gone, uh, has got so far from, um, you know, it's, it gets to so many people. It's just amazing. And I'm, I'm just so glad that so many people were able to, um, to see that and think, yes, that's exactly what I've been longing to say, and she's right, and why should we be women in business? You know, that whole thing, I, I find that, um, yeah, my favorite line is the, it's the, uh, it's infantilizing, it's the children's, it's the children's table of awards. That was my favorite line from that. Yes, <laughs> yes, perfection. <laughs> um, before we go, how can I master that seriously intimidating face that you give Mrs. De Winter, when you welcome her to Manderley Mansion, take me through oh. the process because it's it is that is perfection. Um, imagine walking into a shop where you can't afford anything, and <laughs> somebody comes up and looks you up and down and says, <laughs> "Can I help you?" <laughs> and they're being paid to be polite. You know, that's the sort of thing. Oh, um, you know, and 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 I think that it. Um, there, there must have been somebody at my school who was like that. I, I don't know. 